Hi guys, it's me Karen from Karen's Intuitive Jewelry. Hope y'all are doing well. Um, I'm gonna bring you today the making of this cute little cauldron. Isn't it cute? It turned out adorable. I'm, I'm always shocked when I'm able to create kind of stuff I've had in my mind as I'm sure some of you feel the same way. But this is a silver sheen obsidian and I just kind of researched what cauldrons look like and drew a few of them out and had some ideas. I couldn't really find any, any on Etsy, Google, anywhere with soft soldering. So maybe this is, well, it's definitely a, an original, one of a kind for sure. I've seen some done in, um, wire wrapping and those are really really cute they're able to make steam and I'm sure I could get a little bit more creative and maybe I will but I was just happy to get legs on it and handle and put this cute little triple goddess charm on there um, so yeah that's what I'm gonna be recreating today with a Merlinite but before we begin, I want to let you guys know, just to share things that can go wrong. I don't know, some of you might know I have a little dog. She's about 15, 16 pounds. She's a little Yorkie mix. Her name is Missy. Hi, this is Missy. Say hi. I've had her not quite two years yet. And um, the other night when we were preparing for bed, I let her out for her last potty break. And uh, as I was preparing her some treats, I heard a commotion, went out and was shocked to see two raccoons chasing her. And she ran up onto the porch and they jumped on her and pinned her down and were going at it. And so I, made some efforts to break them up with to no avail and ended up having to step into the danger and manage to whack a few of them away from her enough to break them up. So I took her to the vet today and luckily, praise the Lord, praise the universe, my lucky stars, my guardian angels, whatever you believe in. She only had a couple of small little punctures on her back a couple small tears on her leg and her neck is quite swollen and um, sore, probably just from the whole ruckus. But so we got a booster uh, rabies shot, some pain meds and some antibiotics and she dodged a major bullet. But just so you guys know, and this was in our own backyard, fenced in a pretty populated area, but it can happen. And best we can figure is that it was probably a young mother raccoon with her juvenile baby or something. And they were out late because this was one in the morning looking for food and Missy surprised them. And they, the mother probably went into protective mode and the, uh, offspring followed suit and she wouldn't back down and they wouldn't back down and so it was really scary my neck is killing me today my low back and i've got a big old goose egg where coming up on my shin bone which i'm sure i <laughs> i probably whacked myself in all the chaos because it was pretty scary but anyway thankfully she's okay she's just still really you know wore out from the whole thing but i'm grateful anyway back to the project cute 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 i'm thrilled with this piece may have to keep it <laughs> like i need more and i thought about putting some patina on it but i don't know it looks so great just shiny that i'm gonna leave this one um so I think I mentioned this is a Merlinite and I already put the copper foil on it. It's no big deal. And now I'm going to 
do the trimming part, which is just making it look nice and as even as you can get with an X-Acto knife. And then if, if there's any odd little places on the front, like that little piece, I'll, I'll get that as well, trying carefully not to scratch the stone. Um, the other thing I'd like to just quickly review is the tools, which they'll be listed um, in the description. I'm using the Haco or Haco FX601. And I think there's a 01 or a 02. And the difference that I discovered, because there was lots of debate and questions about what the difference was, the 01, I believe, is uh, has the European plug or a longer cord or something. And the 602, which I think is this one, or it could be vice versa, who knows. Um, but it, there's nothing different with it mechanically. And of course you can see it's kind of dull, so I'll need to, um, you can either tin it. This is with a tip tinner. I'm gonna turn the heat up. I work at about 700 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 365, 370 Celsius and you can see it heats up pretty quickly. This does give off a little bit of smoke when you do it. So have your ventilation or a fume extractor or whatever. I'm real mindful, I got my ceiling fan going and I work out in my dining room. Um, so there's that. And then I'm just, I'm not using my silver gleam on these pieces because I assumed, presumed, I'd be putting patina on them and why waste the super shiny? But this one turned out pretty shiny. So you can see there's not a whole lot of difference and you can always give them a, a nice little polish to bring that back. So I'm just gonna use the way less expensive, uh, this is called, the name of it is Sterling. There's no Sterling silver in it and it's by Harris. And I got this on Amazon for about $36, $37. And you can see for half the amount, you'll pay the same amount for Silver Gleam because it's just quality. And there is like, I had said last time 0.4%, but it could be 4% actual silver in it. I don't know, again, the technical stuff. <laughs> I'm not great at my intense high-tech tools, uh, a popsicle stick for burnishing, a nasty dedicated chain nose pliers. I only use this for soldering because this is what your, to your tools will look like. Um, I have the third hand, which comes in handy. We'll use that today. Some little charms, these are the triple goddess, I think they're called, and it comes in silver and gold. I got all, most of this stuff on, on Amazon. I'll be using 16 gauge pre-tinned copper wire. Again, got it on Amazon, but if you wanna go to their website, you can get it there too. I'm using the liquid flux that cleans up with just water, even though I still, out of habit, put a little bit of Dawn uh, dish soap and with an old toothbrush and just scrub things up. I put uh, a little bit of flux in a bowl with one of these dedicated brushes. This is a disposable brush. I think you can get a pack of ten or whatever on Amazon for, I don't know, three or four dollars for and I cut, I cut it about in half, so the bristles are stiffer. And you can see how little I put in there whenever I work. No sense in wasting it or contaminating it. Again, I started by cleaning the stone, washing my hands, cleaning the stone with some alcohol. Um, and of course you might need some flush cutters for cutting the wire and um, whatever else I can think of as we go. Oh, copper tape. We'll need copper tape. 
For this one, I use this size, and I don't know, can you tell me, is 5 eighths smaller than 3 eighths? I don't know, I'm not good with, with fractions. This is a quarter inch. I just have, try to have a variety. But anyway, this time I'm using the silver backing because you can see I'm getting low on this larger size. And I've got plenty of this because this was the last I ordered. Again, all on Amazon, except this one. I think this was the first one I bought, gosh, years ago. And I got this at Hobby Lobby. And um, yeah, once you take them out of their containers, you can't, you know, packaging, you can't really remember. But um, anyway, I, I think that's all we need to get started. So I'm going to give this a good burnishing. Let me zoom in a little. Give this a good burnishing with the popsicle stick. I hope this isn't, um, hang on. It's right up against the table. And I don't know if it was causing the camera to shake, but you can hear it for sure. And I didn't want it shaking the camera. So burnishing down really good. Y'all know by now this to me is one of the, if not the most important step. And you can, you know, whatever works best for you, you can go around with this piece on the on your mat. Oh, heat resistant mat. These these are great. And there's even some little areas that have magnets under them. Um, that'll keep jump rings and whatever from rolling around. Or you can burnish with the piece in hand, but you don't want to be too rough to where you tear your tape. So I've done that plenty of times. And on the top, I kind of drag it across the top so it gets a real good connection. Because after all, it's only like tape. It's adhesive tape. And that's the only thing that's keeping everything together because solder won't stick to the stone. It only sticks to this copper tape, right? And if there's some wrinkles and whatnot, folds, that, that'll that all be covered up when we um, apply the solder. So this X-Acto knife, I just put a new blade in so I have to pay close attention that I don't slip. And where the folds are, you might want to give it a little back and forth motion. Like right there, it's thicker. So you don't end up tearing when you go to remove it. And then you can just like pick it, pick it off like that. So I'm going to continue, clean that up, and I'll be back. Now that I got that cleaned up, trimmed up um, before I start soldering. I'm going to go ahead and cut the feet and the um, cauldron handle with the 16 gauge pre-tinned copper wire. And all I did for these feet was I took my chain nose and kind of went, oh, what is that, about eight millimeters up or so? And I'd rather have too much than not enough because you end up not having a whole lot of room on the back to do the attaching and everything. So go up this far and I just bent this one this way at a slight angle. And then this one and then just cut it off. and try my best <laughs> to make another one that's similar. Doing the same thing. And they may or may not come out to be exact, but I try. And I liked, cause these kind of look like, you know, little, little feet 
they turned out pretty good, but I don't know if I if I did a good job on these two. See, one one has that angle, and the other one doesn't. So let's see if I can make an angle. Where's these other fly pro? Sorry, pliers. I'm gonna just try and get an angle. There. So again, I mean, I can't tell you exactly how to do things. I'm just experimenting and learning myself. And that could be a little bit more. Still struggling with this, right? So let me um, let me see what I can do off screen. <laughs> Yay! I managed it. So you just have to finagle with it a little bit, and we can cut these down when we get get there. I, I hesitate to cut them very much right now because I don't know how long I need them. So I'm just going to take a little bit off and always hold it to where your pieces that you're cutting off don't go flying because it can end up in your carpet for you to step on when you're barefoot, ouch. And it can hit you in the face. So, okay, that's the way I like it. And the feet were kind of turned out this way. And I had even thought about the original one was, um, to maybe do a little handle on the sides because some of the pictures that I saw. Uh, the cauldrons had little handles, but I don't know. I did, it ended up not looking so great. So I went without because I was gonna have this embellishment on it. So I, I gave up the handles for this. So that's what we're gonna do again today. But that may work out at a later date. Okay. And then the handle, I just took Missy's pill bottle. Right, it's pretty small and I just kind of eyeballed it like that. And um, just kind of wound it around the bottle and just cut it off because this is probably going to be adjusted as well. Because again, we don't know how much room we're going to have in the back, really. Not a whole lot, unless you can get it down some on the sides, right? So you can move it down some, because I didn't want it too, I thought this was pretty much a good, a good height, right? So something like that, and that's not even looking, that looks a little cockeyed. But oh well, you know, what are you gonna do? If you want perfection, then you just take more time. And I, I like it to be as nice as it can be, but sometimes, you know, things happen. And I may not even notice things till the very end. But I think it'll be fine. Okay. Now we are going to move on to soldering and my trusty washcloth and this Harris Sterling Silver Sterling Solder. Sorry, again, you know, I 
get into some trouble with the soldering iron in the camera. So I do apologize. Oh, flux. We got we gotta flux this baby. And I really love this flux way more than the paste. Because that paste, it just is nasty. It's greasy. It puts out a lot of the smoke and fumes. And I don't know, this is just way cleaner. If it's water cleanup, you know it's cleaner. So for me, I usually just... Um, drop some beads of solder around. I don't try to smooth it out as I go. I just drop the beads on there. And then I go around. Let me get my trusty. And you just, you don't even have to drag it. You can tap it. You can just hover over it. That's what a lot of the stained glass people do. They just hover to get the nice bead. But I'm not really looking really too concerned about any of that right now because I'll do that cleanup. And I had to build the back up quite a bit um, on that last one when I got the uh, handle on it and everything so that there wasn't any lumps and bumps and all that. So you'll be adding some more as you go. Of course, we don't want to see a seam at the end and depending on where you're holding your piece because gravity plays a part in this too and that's kind of good enough for me right now because we're going to move on and get the um, little feet on and then do the handle, and then we can clean things up, okay? You just want a, a little tip. I start out by making them as close to the same length as possible so that I have an advantage going in. So you can cut them down to approximate size. And then with your third arm, hand, however, um, it takes some finagling, I'll admit, to get it set up just right. That can take some time. And like I said before, I look to see that point is facing out. Right? So it'll be like... I always have to double check my directions. So I want that point out. So that means this way. So the point will be facing away from the stone. And then put it in there. down as best you can. There'll be some moving around that's expected and it can be frustrating. Dab your flux on there. Trying not to move everything. Let's see if I can do this without banging the camera. Clean my tip off. It's always important. And it's important that I'm in frame. And again, I just take a, a medium-sized blob of 
solder and at least get it on one edge. And you could just hold it for a second so it melts, right? So then it should be at least in place and you can go ahead and get the other side. Okay. Now I'm gonna check and see if I like the way that looks. Don't touch this. Use your pliers to release it. Flip it over and see. Oh, one of my nails just fell off. I'm having a heck of a time with these press-on nails, these glue-on nails. I don't know if the glue is bad or what. I've never had so much trouble in my life. Anyway, so, hmm. Looks a little long to me. Let's compare it to this. It'll be okay. I think it'll be okay. We're going to move on. And again, because we know that the point of this was away from the stone. So we're going to put this in. Might have to tighten these if they come loose. You do have to be patient. And y'all know, I'm not big on patience, but crafting sure has helped me learn patience. So that looks like it's in a good position. Always use your towel to kind of hold your... These are all just things you have to practice and figure out on your own. I mean, I can tell you what I do, but it doesn't mean it'll necessarily you'll get it. And I sure didn't get all this stuff right away. I struggled mightily, mightily, I tell you. Okay, we're gonna check this again. And now see, that one looks longer. So I want to maybe move that up a little. And that's not always easy. But you just hold your iron on there till this melts. And then I'm just gonna try and shift the stone a little. Not a whole lot it needs to move, just a little. I think that that's good there. Oh, you saw that? I bumped it and it moved back. Let me check it again before I decide. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Now, same thing. I'm going to use the third arm, third hand. I like because I have some problems with getting things centered. So I like to try and have my piece so I can look at it, right? Which is sometimes challenging because there's so much stuff going on. And things in the way. Okay, let me move 
all this down. Put that on a flat surface. first so at least we have an attachment I'm clean my iron off because it's oxidizing that click is that melted it's definitely attached now I think I want to actually cut a little piece of that off see what I think. Looks okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. May not be perfect, but I'm okay with that. Now I'm going to build this up so it's all kind of level. So I want lots of flux on there so that the solder flows nicely. And again, I'm just going to drop some solder on here. Just to kind of get started, because I know I'm going to need, you know, quite a bit to make it all level. Even up here. technique that I saw demonstrated by stained glass artists to get the beading that they do and they just tap it. They tap the solder. I don't know if you can see that. Let me zoom in a little bit. Melt it and then tap the solder to get that smooth edge. Oh, I don't know if you noticed that little leg came loose, but it, it, it went back to its position. So you got to keep that in mind with these super hot irons. I want a little bit more there to cover those uh, wire up. So I have to continue to build this. And from my understanding, after a year of research and finally talking to a really experienced stained glass uh, artist, and she owns an Etsy shop, this is why these particular soldering irons, Hacko, and the Weller 100 watt 
are the go-to soldering irons because you need the consistency of those high wattage irons to do the building, the layering upon layers of solder. They don't always do it, but that's what she has discovered from working with it that's required. And so that made sense to me. Now the difference, and I did make a video, if you guys wanna check it out, it's like a beginner's solder, soft soldering, or soft soldering for beginners, that's what it is. And it's where I talk all about what I went through. And though this HACO, HACO is only a 67 watt, it's the, uh, design. This has a ceramic core running through it and that makes the difference and why it's comparable to the Weller 100 watt. Because that threw me at first too. I'm like, wait a minute, why would you recommend a 67 watt soldering iron or a 100 watt Weller? And that's when she got into all this technical stuff from the manufacturer and I was like whoo I'm trying to follow you and the thing that made the most sense was that it's the ceramic core whereas the Weller 100 it's the temperature control is all based on different tips which is why I chose the HACO the HACO because I didn't want to deal with different tips to get the temperature I wanted, even though I'm pretty consistent at staying at like 700 degrees. So anyway, you can see that's pretty smooth. And so I'm going to go around and smooth everything out and I'll be back. Now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how I figured out how to attach this charm. Because at first I thought I would feed a thin, like a 24 gauge piece of wire through here. And I even, um, I think it was on this one, I even reamed out these little areas here. And that may have worked, even though you would have seen the wire coming off out here because you have to have something to attach this to, and I didn't, I wasn't sure. Um, but anyway, when I went, because it, it, these are very flat, and so on a curved stone, it didn't fit very well. It was, all these edges were sticking up. So I got my step bail making pliers and ever so gently went to, as you can see, I got a little bit of an arch, a little bit of a curve in it. But in the meantime, I snapped this little part off, which is no big deal. I can probably use that on another piece and maybe break the rest of them off. And so nothing goes to waste. But the next one, I was really super careful and used the biggest one and did not put it on the weak part. I literally kept the bend on the thickest center and just ever so slightly doesn't take much, but you can probably see the little bit of a curve. So it's gonna lay real nice on the stone. Of course, I had to let that cool off a little bit because I'm gonna be, this is fine detail work. And the other thing I did was, because in like this one, I, I cut off the bail that comes on the charm also because I was gonna do a totally different design but this time I thought, well, I'll just keep it on and I can hopefully, because sometimes different al alloys, alloy metals don't always um, receive soft solder. But I was hopeful that right in that area, I could just make a little bead and it worked. So this time I'm doing the same thing, but a little less wire this time, just enough for me to hold on to. So I want this, the reason I did the wire was just to kind of help me, right? So I just held it over the back. So I have a little bit more control than just trying to hold all these pieces together. Follow me? 
right? So, move this out of the way. Now I'm going to hold this piece as centered. And it might require checking and double checking. You know, I wanna try and get these tops of this up to where it, I can get it to attach. And then this little piece of wire, I wanna keep it kind of centered, even though it'll be, it'll be hidden. So that looks pretty good right there. Let's, let's do it before it moves. <laughs> Which when you apply flux, a lot of times things move. So it can be aggravating. And I always try to have my iron ready to go, but it oxidizes so fast. And I'm just gonna get a little bit and really just drop it right there for now right and drop a piece right there and same with over here okay that was pretty easy and now i really just have to and you can see it's laying pretty flush i'm pretty happy with that i don't think it would, i mean if they catch it on something it might come up but once we really get it on there, we can um, make sure it's laying better. But it looks pretty good to me. Okay, so now I'm gonna double my washcloth because I'm gonna be putting more solder and it's liable to get more hot. Okay. Again, I'm gonna put some more flux in those areas. Drop a bead right there. A little bit bigger bead there. I don't brace my hand, that's when it really shakes. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and now I can cut the wire off short. Because I don't need it anymore. And I'm glad I made it and kept it longer. Last time I kind of cut it off before I should have. Okay. And then I'm gonna be able to cover cover that all up. Right, so more flux. Solder. I'm gonna build this up a little bit because I don't want like a lump just where that wire is. So the key is to make it look all consistent. Again, I'm going to do some of that tapping motion. Really does a nice job to tap because all you're doing really is um, helping it melt and then just kind of moving it along. Right? So look how smooth that is. See what it looks like on the front. It may not look as good on the front. That's yeah, a little globby there. That's okay, we'll fix that. We'll put a little bit more flux in these areas. A little bit more. Oops. 
And all this just, it really does just take patience because I, I couldn't figure it out. In the beginning, it was, it was hard and I got really frustrated. Like, I'm never gonna get this. But then it makes a difference when you have the right tools. Okay, so I think, I think that's good. I think it looks pretty smooth. Seat look okay. The back looks smooth. So there you go, guys. I'm going to clean it up and I'll put the uh, jump ring on and come back. And I'm back after cleaning this up. And look how cute they are. I'm so happy with these guys. Oh my goodness. And now that I know the basic design works, I could always do more embellishments, but I think they're adorable. I love them so much. I really do. It's so exciting to have an idea come together. And just as a final note, especially when using a, a solder that isn't silver gleam i have found personally such as this or the other one i have is uh silva bright 100 you can see it's also a little dull as compared to silver gleam that's why it's the favorite um but these polishes really make a difference. These are metal polishes. You can get several kind. There's this Flitz. There's one called Mothers I have. Um, and I did a little demo on them in another tutorial. And they all work about the same. And you take it just a little bitty dab, literally just dab that on your cloth, wipe it on. I start on the back, I wipe it on, go around the front. By the time I'm done with that, this is ready to be buffed. And look how shiny they come out. And it'll also help protect it. So if anybody even asks customers or whatever, you can tell them, you know, you know for those who don't mind, there's a lot of people that won't even buy this kind of stuff because they don't want the hassle of having to care for their jewelry, but um, some don't mind. Anyway, this stuff works great and it will help, but all metals tarnish, even sterling silver. So there's that. And look how cute. I absolutely, I'm in love with these, honestly. So cute. Okay, guys, I'm on to the next project in the next day or two, which the other two I have is making I want to try and do soft soldering pumpkins. Uh, and these are just some of the cabochons I've selected out to make pumpkins. Of course, I have the the gold stone. Those are always always good. But I'm going to leave some of these for wire wrapping and whatnot. But I've got I got a bunch of them out. So pumpkins, soft soldering, as well as I'll probably do a couple. Um, Fire wrapping, but then I want to try and make a witch's hat out of these. This shape. This is a gold sheen obsidian, and this is rainbow obsidian. And um, the idea is to have the hat coming off this way and coming to a peak. And I think it's very doable. I was again. I have not seen any soft soldering. Uh, of these cauldrons or a witch's hat or even pumpkins. I might have seen one or two pumpkins um, that are soft soldered, but I always like a good challenge. <laughs> and these certainly are. So those will be my next couple of projects for Halloween. And then I need to make a delivery, an inventory delivery to the two shops that I'm in locally and I'll, I'll let them pick which ones they want. 
but I don't know. I like these both. I want them. So I may have to make myself one. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. This was really fun. I appreciate you guys. Please um, like, leave me comments, subscribe if you haven't already. Share this because I'm really trying to get up to my thousand subscribers. Um, that's kind of the, the next big goal. And that, that puts this channel at the next level, they say. I don't know what that really means other than you're supposedly monetized. Don't know. I mean, I'm not going to get rich off this. That was not my intention. But I might as well go for the gold, right? <laughs> anyway, I appreciate you guys so much. And I'm having so much fun sharing this stuff with you. Until next time. Bye.